Good evening. During this hour, you will hear film quotes and references, talk about video games, action figures, and comic books. If any of this frightens you, come closer, <laughs> and let us introduce you to the world of the nerd. I will be your guide, Chris. Uh, Cody, my, my co-host from Traveling Beyond, uh, is unfortunately unable to join us tonight, uh, so we've got a very special guest sitting in on the mic with us, Mr. Derek Samuels from Ingenix. How are you tonight, Derek? Oh, great. Very exciting, guys. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> got your own radio show now. Oh, man. Home run. <laughs> it, it can only go down from here. <laughs> here in Munford. Okay. Home run time. <laughs> um Normally, uh, what Cyber Chat is going to be doing, uh, we're going to be covering anything and everything that you can consider being nerdy or geeky. Uh, I know some people don't like to call themselves that word. I have no problems with it whatsoever. I am a big, huge nerd. Uh, tonight, we're going to be going over some next-generation gaming systems. Uh, not really going to be talking too much about the actual games tonight. may bring up a few, but we're, not, we're mostly going to be uh, concerned with the actual consoles themselves. Uh, of course, we've got Derek here tonight. We're going to talk about Oton a little bit. Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's going to be a big part of our show because that that is a system that has me very intrigued, uh, and I'm very curious to see what it can do when it gets out of the gate. So, <laughs> Oh, you're going to be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love being amazed, and I absolutely cannot wait. Um, we're going to kick off tonight, though, talking about a few of the other uh, what have been come to be termed micro consoles. Uh, we're going to start with the NVIDIA Shield. Now, that came out on July 31st this year. Uh, retails for about $299. Uh, that puts it at the very peak of this uh, genre of gaming uh, is the highest system uh, on the market. Uh, of course, if you haven't had a chance to see the NVIDIA Shield, it's pretty much an Xbox controller with a screen on it. <laughs> so it is a, it is a mobile device. Uh, some of the specs includes a Tegra 4 system on a chip. Uh, I've got a CPU uh, running about 1.9 gigahertz uh, quad core. Uh, 2 gigs of DDR3L RAM and a custom 72 core GeForce uh, graphics processor with 16 gigabytes of flash memory. Uh, the screen that's going to be on it is a 5 inch multi touch display and it's running Android 4.2.1 or Jelly Bean. Um, now, this device, it, when I started reading about it, um, <laughs> I, I really liked it, um, and then I, I kept reading about it, and then it just kept going down the hill from there. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I'm not trying to, you know, berate this system in any way. It, it, it still seems like a, a pretty good system. Um, and one of the things that, that really has me kind of wanting to get this is that it's able to stream your PC games. Nice. Uh, you can bring your PC games from your computer to this. Okay. Um, at launch, it's going to be beta, so it's still in beta right now, and this is with the help of uh, the Steam system Okay. from Valve. Uh, a few of the games that it works with out of the box is Assassin's Creed 3, Batman Arkham City, Borderlands 2, Left 4 Dead 2, Skyrim, and Black Ops 2. Uh, but there's one major problem with this. Uh, your computer has to have certain specs on it, too. So not only do I have to drop you know, 60 bucks on these games, depending on what they are, uh, but my computer has to have at least a GeForce GTX 650 graphic card in it, which by itself costs $150. Okay. Uh, and then it also has to have at least at least an AMD Athlon 2 quad core 630 2.8 gigahertz processor, which costs $180. <laughs> that was my DOS system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not only do you have to pay $300 for the shield, but if you want to play your PC game, stream your PC games to it, you have to drop another $330 to upgrade your computer to where it will be compatible to wow. stream these games. Didn't know that. Yeah, so that, so I mean, we're, we're up in the $600 range now, so that, that puts us um, 
that puts us kind of close to Xbox One territory. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm I'm thinking about uh, uh, getting a new PC anyway. So, and I mean, if your your PC's already running this, you won't have these problems. But if not, you know, you're not going to be able to stream right. the games, which is one of the biggest features on right. the Shield. Uh, some uh, some of the few reviews that have come out for it, they've uh, they've praised it for its performance, right? Uh, and its specs and everything, because it, it does have some pretty some pretty good specs in it. Uh, but they have been highly critical of its cost and lack of games. Okay. Uh, because, you know, all the Android games out of the box don't work with a game controller. Right. You know, so 100% of the Android games don't work with it, and it just right. doesn't have that many games right now. Right. Uh, moving on, we're going to do this, uh, do this a little <laughs> bit quickly so we can get to what I'm looking forward to, the Otan. Sweet. <laughs> nice. Uh, but right now we're going to talk about the Oya. Uh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good... Uh. <laughs> Yeah, that, I, I'm, you can go on. I'm just, <laughs> uh, I got a lot of things I want to share on that, but okay. you know, go on. Uh, <laughs> I've I followed the Oya uh, since it um, since it's announced that it had met its uh, crowdsourcing right. um, funding that it needed to, to get to market. And I've, I've kind of been following it. It's a, it's a nice little intriguing system. Right. Uh, it came out June 25th of this year. Uh, retails for about $99, right. uh, which puts it, you know, at the baseline. You know, is is one of the cheapest systems. I know that there is an Oton version that's right. also a hundred dollars. Right. Uh, specs on the Oya is a Tegra three uh, system on a chip, one point seven gigahertz quad core ARM processor. Um, this is where they kind of lost me though. One gigabyte of DDR three RAM. That that's uh, that's a little bit you know, but I mean again that's pretty much cell phone tech right now. Right. Uh, we got a GeForce. It seems like everybody's uh, everybody's in love with GeForce so far. <laughs> uh, we got a GeForce uh, GPU, eight gigabytes of flash memory. So we've um, we've cut it in half from right. the Shield. But again, with Android games, you don't need that much. Right. Uh, we've got a modified version of Jelly Bean. Instead of just running uh, straight Jelly Bean, they modified it, uh, and it has its own store for apps and games that are designed for the system. Uh, and it actually comes with access to OnLive and I have kind of a love hate relationship with online myself. <laughs> uh, it's it's really great if you've got like a T four line running right, to your house, but right. other than that, it's, it's just it's worthless. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I hate to be that down on something that that brings games to my house, you know. But it's just mm, they need they they still got some bugs. I think. I think on live was revolutionary before its time. I think uh, the market just had to adjust to on live, and like you're saying with the internet issues you know it, it can get difficult at times to uh utilize on live i have it on my system and i played a couple games on it but i think it's a revolutionary system for its time but like i said i think it was just a little ahead of its time and how it introduced itself into the market i kind of think that hurt it a little bit uh, i agree with you because i mean it i think they even came out before netflix right right so nobody had ever heard about streaming anything to your house <laughs> much less video games um but one of the big things with oya um, one of the things that really intrigues me about it is it can be rooted without right. voiding the warranty. So right. you can pretty much do, I mean, just absolutely anything you want to with it. Right. Uh, the system can be used as a development kit, uh, so there's no licensing fees. So when you get it, you can make your own games with it, which is also a, a big feature of Oya. I mean, uh, Oton. Oton. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I am very sorry yeah, about the, that. O, the O's and the O's. <laughs> I know. I'm saying Oya, 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 yeah. and I want to keep saying it. But... Um, Wait. No and problem. Uh, the, I mean, the thing is about the size of a Rubik's Cube. Right. Yeah, um, my guys came down. My Gamer Peer team came down from uh, up, up north and uh, visited us and brought us uh, a Ouya system to uh, uh, look over. I mean, it was like a Rubik's Cube. It was small, and we compared it to the O-Ton. And it, 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 for the first time seeing it, it really was nice seeing something, you know, that compact and small, you know. So, I mean, I, I give them praise for the design. I thought it was unique. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, um, <laughs> the only thing uh there's a couple of games on it you know it'll work a lot with um with the android games that are already on the market uh but some of the i know um square Enix has officially announced that a lot of the final fantasy games will be coming to it yeah you know and i mean we got uh final fantasy 3 you know which is uh which is pretty dated now <laughs> right right you know i think they should have uh should have probably led with something else right uh reviews on it have been uh, been a little bit mixed uh they see the system as being developed with love uh <laughs> but expect the light specs to hold the system back right you know cuz it is a, it is a little light on the 
the um, the hardware. Well, you know, when we introduced the Evo 2, uh, that was before the OUYA system in 2010, early 2011. We were the first company to actually introduce an Android-based system. Unfortunately for us, the media and the mainstream news picked up on OUYA and just completely left us out the fold. Well, a lot of people, I hear a lot of people saying, well, Derek is uh, O-Time better than OUYA, blah, blah, blah. But I'm saying we were there before anybody in that space. We had the Evo 2. We had it almost ready to go. But the thing about me, you know me more better than anybody. I can't stand to not be original in my space. And once, you know, they introduced that system and got all the mainstream press, I kind of just said, you know what, we got to come with something a little bit better, a little bit stronger and uh, innovate a little bit better. So uh, I just want everybody to know we were the first to introduce an Android-based gaming console before anybody. That's on record. Check your Wikipedia facts. Oh, yeah, and I, and I can vouch for that, you know, because I've, I've actually followed these guys for a very long time. Right. Uh, and with that, that gets us to um, what I'm going to, even though we're talking about, quote, unquote, the big three a little bit later in the show, brings us to Yay. what I consider the star of the show, <laughs> <laughs> and that is Oton. Sweet. Um, <laughs> but before we talk about Oton, uh, I wanted to, to go back, uh, and I mean way back. Okay, let's do um, it. Talking about Evo mm. Smart Console. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and by the way, uh, if anybody uh, wants to call in and talk to Derek, you know, uh, give us some pointers, you know, talk to us or anything, uh, you can give us a call at 256-854-9411. Uh, but going back to Evo. Uh, <laughs> To, uh, what's that now? 2001, I think it was? It was initially at the end of 2003, and I, I, I officially kicked it off in 2004. So I went back a little far. Yeah, yeah, a little bit too far, but it's okay. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize, there's a lot of confusion online right now. People saying, Derek, uh, we confused. Uh, is it Envisions? Is it Ingenious? Is it Evo? Is it Oton? But what I tried to explain to them, Evo was my first project, a small indie project that we did. It wasn't never meant for mainstream. It was just a small base project that, you know, we got a group of uh, co-workers, friends together and helped me produce it uh, with a budget of $5 a week per person. You know, we introduced this system. We worked our butts off on this system. We, we sold a couple. We had a limited run. And that system was the first of its kind to, to bring convergence. The thing that you're seeing now in these current consoles, we were already doing it in 2004 with Evo, 2008 with Evo. And so, once again, like I said, I'm glad I'm on the show. I'm glad I'm here. Y'all give me the opportunity to say we were the first to innovate in this space once again. But for some reason, we're not getting the recognition uh, that we deserve, that we think we deserve for innovating in this space for the things that we developed before the other consoles. Yeah, because I, I have to admit, uh, when I first uh, started hearing what they were doing with Xbox One, the first thing that came to my mind was Evo. Right. You know, but again, I, that seems to be a thing that happens a lot with uh, technology. The first person to come out with something. Right. You know, it, it kind of stumbles around. You know, even if it, even if the system itself doesn't stumble. Right. It seems that the community abroad kind of stumbles around with it, right? You know, and then but when the second one comes out, it's it's everybody's in love with it, right? It's right. The, it's going to become the new norm, you know. But uh, I mean, we were doing uh, Netflix or what you want to call a Kimbo uh, video on demand before anybody was thinking about doing. It. We had a deal in place with a Kimbo uh, that started up, and you know we were excited about that that contract to work with those guys. And you know, I hear a lot of people saying, "Well, Derek." Uh, you know, y'all guys, you sound new, but uh, people don't realize I've been doing this for almost ten years. Well, we're not we we're new to the sense of the of people finding us, but we are pros and veterans when it comes to this space. Unfortunately, we just haven't had the attention that some of our competitors benefit from. And that, and to me, that's a that's a travesty. Right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to pull out the T word on that one. Oh no, it, it deserves it. I mean, because I've like I said, I've been following you guys for a while. Right. You come out with some some very innovative things, but because you don't get the exposure you deserve, right? You know, not a lot of people hear about it. And, you know, and I get I hate, I hate to say it, I get so upset with it because we got to def we constantly have to defend our position with people about our credibility, our innovation. And where we want to go, other companies can say we finna come out with a logo. Let's do it, and everybody excited. But when we spend hours trying to innovate and make people excited and bring the NES days back of that glory of man, what's new? What what Derek finna do next? I'm all about excitement. I'm all about fun. I want people to be like Derek. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do it, Derek. Do it. And so I get a little upset when I hear people trying to attack my people and our ideas and our innovation and not giving us the recognition we need. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, just do an Internet search, you know. And right. You can just, I mean, you could see people talking about it. 
you know, people having discussions about it, you know, back in, like you said, 2003. Yeah, know. people saying it's not real. They said Evo wasn't real. We had, like, a room full of, full of Evos sending them out. Left. We never had an Evo really returned. Yeah. I mean, people are like, well, Evo is not real. I'm like, oh, my God, what have I been doing for the last 10 years then? <laughs> I, I've got one. So, I mean, I, I can guarantee that Evo was real and that Evo came out. Right, right, right. Know. Thank you. So, I mean, I've, I've got one. I played it. I, I quite enjoyed it. Well, you got some people that want to buy one. Are you interested in selling yours? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> well, I try, guys. <laughs> Sorry, but that that's that's mine. Um, we're going to take a, um, a quick commercial break, uh, and we'll be right back here on Cyber Chat with Caps Internet Radio. If you mention cinnamon rolls or cheese rolls here in the Mumford area, there's only one place that comes to mind, and that is Miss Evelyn's Bakery. Miss Evelyn and her daughter Renee have been baking rolls by the dozen or by the box full for a number of years, but they are so much more than their bread. Cakes, catered meals, weddings, and even punch and cookies for your get-together. Miss Evelyn's Bakery can help make any family or business event that much more special. Now, they don't have a counter to pick up on the fly, but if you give them a call at 256-358-4001, they can get you fixed up with your order by the time you need it. Famous for cinnamon and cheese rolls, but oh, the goodness of so much more from the capable hands of the bakers with decades of experience. Call Miss Evelyn's Bakery today at 256-358-4001. Open Tuesdays through Saturdays. Nighttime Groove with Caps Internet Radio. Be particular every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. here on Caps Internet Radio. District 35 State Representative Steve Hurst wants you to know that anytime you have a concern or question about things going on in the district or at the State House, he wants to hear from you. He always says, Feel free to call on me if I can be of help to you. And if you know Representative Hurst, you know that he means it. Call him at 256-761-1935. And remember, Representative Hurst will never ask you your party affiliation because he believes it's all about the people and not about politics. This political ad is paid for by Steve Hurst, Bell Run Road, Lincoln, Alabama, 36268. If you didn't hear the end zone, here's what you missed. Don't you think there's a target with this rule? Well, I think, okay, this is just my opinion, but could this possibly be the NCAA setting rules to try to even the playing field so that the other teams in the other conferences don't continue to just be manhandled by the SEC schools that they play every year? The End Zone with Will, Drew, and Jez every Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. here on CAPS Internet Radio. All right, guys, and we're back with um, Ch- Cyber Chat. Uh, special guest in the studio with us, Derek Samuels. He uh, kind of morphed into a guest co-host here. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, I can multitask. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cody, again, couldn't be with us. He's going to be our normal co-host, uh, but he got called away. Uh, so we're, we're, we're happy to have Derek in here with oh, us. Oh, man, fun so. times at Caps Internet Radio, fun times. <laughs> <laughs> and, again, you know, if you want to give us a call, talk to Derek, uh, you can give us a shout at 256-854-9411. Uh, continuing our talk, uh, we started a little bit ago about Evo. Um, I heard that Evo had uh, a pretty big splash at, uh, at CES. Yes, we really turned it out at the CES when we first introduced the system. Uh, quick story. I got time to tell a quick story. Oh yeah, yeah. Quick, quick story, guys. Real quick story. Uh, when we went to CES show, uh, our booth was like the size of a, a matchbox. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, the team can't see this this, this booth. They're gonna just flip out when they see this. They got us like 
in the in the desert where nobody would ever venture back. Like I, I swear they had like werewolves and Dracula back in the back somewhere. <laughs> 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 and so I said, well, let me go motivate the guys. Let them know, you know, we can still make it. And you know, we showed we showed our guys the team. They were like, uh, Derek, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I said, yeah, it'll work, it'll work. <laughs> and uh, sh- uh, true to what we said, we set the system up and. At that show, we introduced the first, I think, biometric fingerprint login to a console and voice recognition to control the interface. Things that you're seeing now, we were doing that in 2007. We 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 took over the show for that little spot. Unfortunately, like I said, we didn't get a lot of media. We had a lot of people come back, and, and, and some people wanted to copy us. We had uh, HP come back and give us a, a very nice... Uh, uh, appreciation for what we did. They said we finally found a way to enter the living room, and we really, really enjoyed that. We, I mean, we met a lot of great people, and that show was really something special. Uh, my first time in Vegas, I enjoyed. It. I enjoyed the people there, and the system. Just, I mean, that's when we really took things off with that system in 2007. I remember uh, seeing some photos from that show, and it. You couldn't even see the booth for the people that were crowded around it, you know, that, that were watching you guys' demonstration, you know. So I, I don't even know how big the booth really was, but it, I mean, I think it was, it was a just, five by ten. I think, I think a ten by ten by ten. I think, I think it was. That that is pretty small. That that probably had enough room for the system on it. <laughs> I know, I know. And we and we were trying to squeeze everybody in. I mean. And the people around us and other booths kind of got mad because we had started getting so much press because our system was actually talking to the gamer. They was interacting with the gamer through voice recognition and through biometrics. And like I said, that was the first time that was ever done. Once again, we was ahead of the curve on everybody in that space. Right. And, you know, it was exciting times. I think uh, I remember uh, a story that one of your employees posted uh, that said you actually had people from the booze around you coming and asking you to turn it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we had got so many people around. I think it was like a crowd of maybe fifty to a hundred folks, and I and everybody was trying to get my attention all at once. And I appreciate it. And I was trying to make sure I was courteous to everybody and try to talk to everybody. And I mean, we had a great time. I mean, we I think one of our systems we had a black one and a white one, and the white system cracked that night, and we stayed up to like three in the morning trying to get that system back online because it was a, a prototype Man. model. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it back. That's uh, that's faith. <laughs> that, that's dead. I'm, I'm sorry. That, I mean dedication. That's dedication. <laughs> I'll, I'll find the right word eventually. Yeah. So we we, we, we had the black system and we used it and uh, we had a great show. We got a lot of feedback, a lot of partners, and you know we continued to move on. You know with our small uh, budget, shoestring budget, and uh, like I said, we, we're here for the gamers. Yeah. And you said five dollars. Yeah. Five dollars a week from people. We took in, initially we took in five dollars a week from coworkers uh, to help me do this. Uh, it started out with me and one one of my my classmates. Uh, I told him he thought I was I was freaking crazy. Uh, <laughs> but usually I, most people are when they're smart. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. He said, "Derek, are you serious about this? You got to be crazy, dude." I said, "No, I think I can do this." And then we told another friend. We told another friend. Then we started getting together, and everybody started getting excited about it. I was excited about it. I was. I never had no intentions of bringing anybody else on board with me to do Evo. None whatsoever. I just. I wanted to do everything on my own. Uh, but I mean, I, I mean, what could I say? They wanted to see something revolutionary. They want. They seen something that could change the world, and that's what we continue to do today with Old Time. So not only did you bootstrap it, <laughs> yes, uh, but you also announced it. At the same time, <laughs> uh, put a little. Yeah, I want to say that in a certain way. We did uh, that. A little, a little notation, an asterisk up there. You know, we kind of started the first Kickstarter Indigo campaign a little bit. You know, because like I said, we just went around and just crowdfunded the system. Uh, you know, we raised a lot of money. I mean, we put a lot of them out there, and uh, to, to to this day, we still servicing units, and we never had one that actually just completely broke down. But um, we crowdfunded that system. We crowdfunded the death. You know, that was in two thousand four or five that we crowdfunded the system. Um, and let's talk about uh, another quote unquote Xbox One innovation, uh, the TV tuner. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, another uh, feature that we had to Evo was the DVR feature. Uh, once again, we were ahead of the curve, ahead of the space again, uh, way before anybody else thought about that. Uh, it was just amazing just thinking about it. I'm glad you brought that up. It just brought back memories now, like, man, we were ahead of everybody on that. Oh, yeah. And I think uh, the first one after. You guys uh, kind of put it out there was uh, the boxy box that came right. out with the first DVR and TV tuner. And, right. and I don't know if you know this, but I actually just heard today they just discontinued their service. Yes. And they're pulling all their boxes off the shelves. Yeah, I think somebody bought them out. Uh, was it uh, Samsung, I think? Uh, honestly, I have i haven't got a, a lot of chance to look into it. I mostly just heard about it right. this morning before I went to work, you know, so I didn't have a lot of chance to look into it. I, just, I, I was just kind of shocked because honestly... 
Uh, I've got a uh, Roku player okay. for my Netflix, and it's it's going under. It's ready to die. I mean, I was actually looking at a boxy box. Oh, really? As a replacement, and I, I read that, and I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, I think Samsung bought those guys out. If I'm not mistaken, I'm sure some internet guys gonna go try to find it, and make sure I'm, I'm telling the correct information. Uh, help me out, please. And oh, uh, yeah. I think they did buy them out for the not more for the technology, but more for the the. I guess I want to say yes for the technology and for the people that they had working there because okay. I think maybe Samsung's trying to do some type of uh, box or something. Okay. Well, uh, for our Caps listeners, um, I'll try to find out a little bit more about that and post that on the uh, the Cyber Chat Facebook page, which you can find at uh, facebook.com slash capscyberchat, C-A-P-S-C-Y-B-E-R-C-H-A-T. Uh, moving on, uh, let's go on, um, get off, uh, <laughs> move on from Evo and go to Evo 2. Uh, now, admittedly, uh, I was working very heavily in this time uh, and did not really get a chance to look too much into Evo 2. Uh, can you just give me a, a quick little spill on it? Yes. Evo 2, we had initially decided that we weren't going to do any more Evo units after the Evo uh, 1 system. Uh, and just a little side note, we introduced cloud uh, with the game box servers. We had cloud storage for Evo, and, and we, we thought about following that up you know, with another system called Game Box. Just so people can have a, a different feel, we we had we decided just to drop the Evo name altogether because we, we felt we wanted to do something new. Uh, but our fans came back and, and just in large numbers saying, "Derek, uh, we want Evo. Where's <laughs> Evo at? Uh, is it going to be another Evo?" I like, but I, we had sold out. I, we didn't have no intentions of doing another one. But once the fans got you know said, "Derek, you know we want to do another one," I said, "Okay, I got an idea. Nobody's never done this before. Let's use Android as the operating system to do an Evo 2 unit. And that's that was the basis for the Evo 2 unit, the Android uh, operating system into our box. The first in 2011, 2010 to 2011 when we introduced that. I, I do remember uh, catching a few little things on it. I do remember the Android operating system. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I first read it, um, I thought it was it was a little it was going to be different. Uh, but I, I thought myself it was a it was a pretty good idea. Yeah, you know, because I mean, Android is a great system. I have an Android phone myself. Right, right. And it's just it's just a great put together system. I mean, we we only produced I think about five or ten prototypes, and maybe a, a couple people got their hands on them. We sent one to a company overseas. We never got it back. Um, I think I gave one to a customer. Um, unfortunately, I don't even have any Evo twos. I mean, we only had just a small handful of them. All I have now is really just photographs. And that system was to be like I said, the game changer. Uh, but I'm glad we had other thoughts in mind because, like I said, we we introduced Oton. Oh yeah, and uh, with that, let's uh, let's move on and and uh, get to the meat of it and talk a little bit about Oton. Yay! Um, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, do you have a release date yet? Oh man. Uh, it, I mean, do you even have a? I know it's I know it's a little far out. Uh, you just started your Indiegogo campaign. Yes. Uh, I don't. Is that a link that you can give out on the air without going into a lot of X's and Y's <laughs> yeah, and Z's? Yeah, I, they can just go to indigo.com and type in Oton. It's going to pull right on up. Oh yeah. In the yeah. search. Um, with Oton, that is Indiegogo.com. Yeah, indigo just to let yeah. you know. And uh, actually, if you go to the CyberChat Facebook page, I do have a link to that. Nice. We appreciate or, you. Um, you can go to the Ingenix page, which right. is Facebook.com/slash Ingenix. I'm going to let you spell that for me if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. That's E N G E N. I U X. Like I came up with that name because I thought the idea of Oton was a genius, and I said, "How about doing you no know, coming to saying ingenious? You know that that is an ingenious idea, and that's how the, the name, the project name, ingenious came about." But back to your first question, uh, we really want to get these systems out sometime around July, August next year. But it all it's all dependent on our crowdfunding effort. Um, we're a little disappointed right now because, like I said, we we wanted to be a little bit further along in our in our funding. We thought, we felt, and we know we got a better system. Uh, that's anything that's ever been on the market. Uh, what generation we in now? Game consoles. Um, like, we just hit the eighth. Oton is like generation ten or eleven. We we that far advanced than all the other systems. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just I just felt I'm a little disappointed because I I felt nobody has we haven't accomplished what we wanted to accomplish with our numbers to make that date. I hope our community turn up and turn out and help us get this system done. Uh, to me. This system, I think, is the most important system of a generation. I don't tell you why I say that, and I just say it because it's my system. Because of the technology and what we're trying to do and what I'm trying to bring to this space as far as innovation, it's going to bring something never been done before in gaming. Because I know gamers saying, well, Derek, uh, will it be 2D, 3D? We're going to do the best quality game. The game quality will not be lacking. You're going to get the best quality. I'm a gamer, old school gamer, and I know what gamers want, and we're going to give them that. But... <laughs> Like I said, this is the most important system of a generation because it's going to bridge that gap between what I call obsolete 
or older models into and advance us into a more advanced stage of gaming. And like I said, I just wish you know people can get behind us and support this system. Oh yeah, and I mean, please, please, because I'm ready for mine. You know, <laughs> I, man, so I, man, uh, so go go help them out. You know, <laughs> let, let let me have my Oton. You know, let me have my dream. <laughs> I really want my system too. And and we and the funny thing is we're not that far off to getting it done. We just need people to help us, you know, get it done. Unfortunately we haven't got the media push once again that we needed to get to skyrocket the system to hit reach our goal. Because once again a lot of people saying, uh, the system, you know, it's impossible, you can't do it. Let me tell you real quick, for three years I had almost the same issues, but once I figured out how to bring the system together, it's quite simple. I won't share my inside secrets with my competitors, but the idea is fairly simple, what I did to create the code to make it self-generate games, and it will do as advertised. I guarantee you'll get 100 games on Oton, and we're going to give your money back, and that's for real. You heard that on Caps <laughs> Internet Radio. <laughs> and I know a lot of you don't know Derek Samuels, but never tell him he can't do anything. Uh, because as soon as you tell him he can't, he comes out and he does it. <laughs> uh, we're going to go ahead and take another uh, quick break, and we'll be right back with Cyber Chat. If you'd like to be a part of today's program, call 256-854-9411 or email us at capsinternetradio.com. When you want some of the best barbecue in town, you go to Big Daddy's Barbecue on Highway 21 in Munford. Barbecue plates and sandwiches, along with all the fixings, will get you fed and full and back to work in no time. Besides barbecue, Big Daddy's has daily specials such as meatloaf, chicken livers, and catfish. And you might even find some spaghetti and lasagna on special days if you're lucky. Don't forget to ask about those homemade pastries and desserts. Big Daddy's Barbecue is open Tuesday through Saturday for early lunch through dinner, but takeout orders available by calling 256-358-9005. Big Daddy's Barbecue, also home of Biker's Night each Thursday and cruise in Saturday nights every third Saturday. All right, guys, uh, we're back with Cyber Chat. Uh, Chris and special guest Derek Samuels in the studio. Oh, yes, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, we're having fun. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Lo- lots of fun with our first episode. The uh, first episode? Yeah. Wow, I'm on the inaugural first you episode. Are, yeah. We're making history tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> This is amazing. I, I said to myself when uh, when I was uh, doing getting show ideas together, how can we start this party with a bang? Oh my uh, goodness! You and, thought and, about and me. And the first thing that come to mind was Derek Samuel. Let's do and, it. And, and, and Oton. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm pumped. <laughs> uh, we're going to continue our talk here about Oton. Uh, we said that uh, that's it's you know we it's nothing set in stone yet, but you said you're looking at about quarter two next year. Uh, sometime around there for the release, hopefully sometime in August. Man, if if people can get behind this project and go ahead and get this thing funded, I can get on 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 the on the move right now and get this system ready for next year. Um, and that's what we're trying to do: get it ready as soon as possible. I know a lot of people want Oton. I want it, and like I said, we want to be right there among the elite because we feel like a company, an elite group with innovative ideas, and that's our goal is to innovate this space. Oh yeah. Uh, some of the specs we're looking at, uh, 1.2 gigahertz quad-core ARM processor. Uh, we're going back up to 16 gigabytes of flash storage from the, the measly 8 <laughs> of Oya. Uh, more more storage is better. Always. Always. Um, now, one thing uh, that I hadn't seen yet, um, I don't know if you can tell me yet or not. I know um, what you're going to say. I can read your mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how, how much RAM are we looking at? I don't know yet. That's um, We still debate because the board that we're using now just – was the Gen 1 board. Mm-hmm. The Gen 2 board is going to come from our manufacturer, so we haven't um, set that in stone yet. I'm not absolutely sure on that, but as soon as I do, I'm going to let y'all guys know because you know me. I want the best in the system, for the best for our gamers. Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't know if anybody really picked up on that. Um, you said you're going to the Gen 2 board, so right. as soon as this thing comes out, it's it's going to be you're trying to get the most cutting edge as, as, as you can get for us. You know? Yeah, right, because you know I got experience in this space, and I know when we first introduced this system, the specs that we use are, are going to be kind of outdated a little bit. And like I said, the board that we use, we use that to get the prototype together so our programmers around the world can test and demo. Uh, but the new board is going to be a lot more powerful uh, to really to do what we need for a game. Because like I said, the key thing with Oton is that it's not about graphics and power per se, 
It's more about innovation and value and saving cost and expanding an open ecosystem for gaming, for gamers to share and make money off our system. If you stick an OTAN in your home right now, it is full capacity. You're going to make money off that system. If you want to make money or you want to share games, it's going to be a tool to help you utilize what you're trying to do because it goes beyond just gaming. Oh, yeah. So not only am I playing, I'm making money at the Absolutely. same time. And there's nothing better than that. <laughs> and and, and to, to me, I cannot stand a console that sits up under your TV and it does nothing if you don't have any games, nothing to do. It's just sitting up there collecting dust. With Oton, turn Oton on, tell it to create a game, and if, if you like it, Oton will share that game and sell it for you, and you'll make the money from it. It's that automated. We want to automate it to that to that point. Like I said, this is 10th generation technology we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, no licensing fees. Anybody can be a developer. Does it matter? That's a great question. I, I do want to touch on that a little bit. Uh, so as far as developers, uh, their games, after, if they sell a game on Oton, it's free. What it does is we get the ads from the demo games, and that's how we make our money from developers. Now, if some, a, a gamer wants to buy a game from a developer, they would click on the game, and it either will take them to that developer website or they can buy it directly from the system. We haven't decided on it based on how we get the crowdfunding done. So we want to give the developer 100% of that product. I don't want none of the developer's money. I don't want none of it because we're going to have ways to generate money with Oton beyond just developers. I'm building a system. When you say open, I mean open. That's what we want to do with Oton. I know if the O means open. <laughs> <laughs> I know if there's any developers listening right now, they probably got o Oton Crush going on. <laughs> um, I'm here for the developers, guys, 100%. I'm your man. Oh, yeah. Um, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about some numbers. Uh, I know some of the ones that you got listed on, uh, on Indiegogo, uh, it starts at 99, right? With the basics. Yes, absolutely. And that's just an early bird system. This is a basic system. Uh, it's just going to be just, you know, the basic, basic function of game creation, uh, come with a host of other things. Uh, just a really the early bird system. Okay. Uh, I think there was a 149 version was am it, i right yeah you're right and that's the basic system again that's once we sell out of the 99 units and that's the same exact system but we had we got to go up on the price because at 199 dollars it's going to be kind of you lost leader item a little bit you're going to lose okay. a little money if you don't you know up it a little bit because like i said it's razor blades and bananas over here oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah i i know how you work like that <laughs> uh and then is there one between that or then do we go to the big daddy uh it's one between that i think it's uh 279 i think and that's the one that has the projector in it in the in the rear Okay. Uh, where you can put your game on a wall. Uh, some people may try to put on a ceiling, on a car, on their baby brother, <laughs> on whatever. As long as it's legal, I don't care where you put it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can just see it now. Mario Brothers bouncing off brother's nose. <laughs> right. And then what we did, we integrated that technology. And, and to me, once again, we innovate in that space because you don't have to use, use it just for gaming. You can use it for business presentation, development, uh, business that want to have a low-cost projector, they can use that as a low-cost projector. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, uh, but it, it seems like you're straddling markets hmm. uh, a little bit. Because don't tell everybody <laughs> the secret. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because not only does it seem like um, it's this this exact same system is a home system, but it also with the if you get the projector in it, it's kind of a, a mobile system too. That's it. It's almost kind of like it puts it in the DS and, and PS Vita realm. Right. So. Right. Right. Which, I mean, <laughs> you put a projector on it. I mean, how big of a, a space are we talking? We're talking maybe 50 inches or more. Uh, it all depends on what. I know we were talking with a manufacturer, but we haven't confirmed the deal with those guys yet. I really want to mm -hmm. get a deal with this particular company. But if we can't, uh, we, we have to find other sources. But we want a big screen. You know, we'll, oh, yeah. a that's, big screen. That's bigger than my TV. <laughs> so I don't know what I'll 50 be using to 60, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's going to be clear, high definition. 1080p? Yes, or, high definition um, for the projector. It's going to be crystal clear. Okay. It's going to look just like you're looking at a TV. All right. Uh, again, if you want to give us a call, 256-854-9411. Uh, uh, if you ring in, we'll stop what we're doing and we'll talk to you. Uh, talk to us. <laughs> any questions you want to ask, uh, if they're answerable, we'll answer them. Uh, so is that the, the high end or is there another There's one? one more version and that's the one with the built-in projector for the rear and the motion camera in the front, which is kind of what we call the connect for our system, meaning uh, the system you'll be able to do motion and gesture uh, with the system. But it's really, a lot of people got it confused a little bit. Uh, they saying, you know, that was for developers, which developers can create games based on that, but that's that's really something for Oton. And what, that, what I mean by that, when Oton goes and create games either manually or autonomously, it's going to build in, you can choose if you want 
motion or voice in that particular game, and Oton will input that information into that game. So that's why the camera is really there for Oton to facilitate that need for the user or the gamer that want to have that type of uh, gameplay within their game. Okay. Revolutionary. That's you awesome. heard it here first. Oh, yeah. Uh, something that, uh, that you brought up uh, that I want to get to, uh, which I think is probably one of the biggest features of the game. Uh, I don't know if a lot of our listeners um, know what it is, but you brought up autonomous game creation. <laughs> <laughs> That's the and biggest feature. And you know we want to talk about that because oh. I know a lot, of, a lot of people that haven't heard it yet are like, what? <laughs> you you can imagine the conversation I get on on Google Forms, Facebook, emails. People like Derek, you didn't lost your freaking mind. It's impossible. I'd have people from you know Microsoft people emailing us in podcasts, telling us we can't do it. I mean, we, it, it's just, it's just crazy. Some of the, the feedback that we got from you know what we're trying to do with this, but the creation code, like I said, it happened almost three years ago when I and I thought it was insane. Uh, I told my team about it, you know, and said. Uh, I came up with an idea. I think it's revolutionary. At the time, it was called Evo Touch because I wanted people to be able to touch the internet, to touch the world. And when I told my team about it, like, Derek, you done lost your freaking mind. No, that it don't make any sense. It, it, it don't make any sense. But when I broke it down to them again and explained it to them how the creation code works, the creation code, I see games. I've been, I've been gaming for a long time. I see the game in different levels and phases. You got your sprites or your characters, your music, your backgrounds, your physics. And what Oton does, like making a cake, it brings all these ingredients together to make one complete game. And we can, like, for example, we get our crowdfunding done. We're going to spend about sixty to $70,000 on sprites, backgrounds, 2D, 3D. And Oton is just going to source all these bits of information into one piece. We already got the working code, and that's in our, our Indigo video. It's, on, it's in there briefly, but it put that game in Mario together in under seconds. That level that you're seeing in Mario was a level that the Oton algorithm created within seconds. I, I, if, I, if you blink, it probably was a half a second. <laughs> uh, and I know it was uh, it was a while back when I actually had the privilege of seeing it myself. Yes. Uh, and I think um, it was kind of un- you know it, yeah. it kind of caught you off guard a little bit. Oh yeah, I mean when you first told me about it, I was just <laughs> I, I was I was a little bit speechless, and then you kind of showed it to me, and I seen now. Uh, granted, this was you know a couple. Uh, I think it was about a year ago when yep. I had a chance to see. Right, it. right. Uh, so it was in. It was in. It's still in uh, infancy, uh, but it, it slapped that game together. Uh, and I think you showed me making a couple different levels, and each level was right. different. Right, right. You know, and these, of course, I had played Mario before, being uh, being a Linux guy. Right. You know, and they were completely different from what came with a, with Mario. I want to touch on something you said something very important because a lot of a lot of gamers saying, "Well, Derek, you're not, you not you didn't show us a, of it doing any like of a whole bunch of different games." Well, guys, it costs a lot of money to facilitate. I think I was, I was spending roughly spending roughly about four thousand dollars a month or three thousand dollars a month of my own personal money trying to get this together. And to facilitate that, we, we need to create the OTAN database to, to create the many more different levels of games. So we use Mario as a template to do that. We can take this code and put it in any game. We can turn and create new levels for Pac-Man, any existing game, and also create new brand new games. So once we get funded, it's going to be just cr- a crazy time in gaming. I mean, we're going to see some new characters we've never seen before. Oh, yeah, and I know uh, I saw your Facebook page uh, with one of the posters you were giving you know, with some of your artwork on it, and it, it brought back uh, brought back some memories from the Evo days. I know I even posted on the uh, posted on the page the I love that picture, the, the return of KD. <laughs> you know, Kid, Kid Destiny. Yes, Kid I Destiny's lo- back. That so. picture, the, Kid Destiny, was created by me, but dr- drawn and designed by Brian Stone, great friend of mine. Uh, when I was working on my comic books, what a lot of people don't know, I used to draw and publish my own comic books. Uh, I had characters that I created. Uh, I, I think one time I took a week off from work to draw my Mortal and Sa- Mortal Assassins comic book. Based off something like X-Men, but a little bit better. And that's what I want to do with Oton. For those people that are comic book creators, they can take Oton and bring their games to life on the system. Or a movie studio. It's more than just games. We can do infinite things with this. So this system is revolutionary. Oh, yeah. And we, we love that word. <laughs> Especially when it gets thrown around. Yes. Um, one more quick thing I want to ask about Oton. Because uh, we do want to give uh, some time to everybody. We don't want to be biased. Right. Um and this, this is probably honestly not a question you get asked a lot, but to me it's it's the little things that, that really bring something together. So um, if there is uh, one, what is uh, one of the smallest um, features of OTAN 
that doesn't really get talked about a lot? Is there a feature that just kind of gets overshadowed by the game creation and everything? Is does it just do something that you guys put in there, but not a lot of people talk about? Well, yeah, we don't we don't have time to talk about it because everybody concentrating on on the things trying to figure out: are we real? Are we this? To me, I think we miss an opportunity to talk about and engage with this platform to learn what it all can do. Yes, one of the things that I like about it is the AI. What I plan to do because I want you to be on a board. I want gamers to be cussing at me, mad that they playing. They saying that God darn it, Derek. He put this in here just to mess me up. Darn you, Derek. But we wanted to be able, like, <laughs> go ahead. Memories of Castlevania. <laughs> I want, I want gamer rage. I want gamer rage. But don't break your old ton because I want you to buy another one. I want people when they're playing a game. I want a board to like. I got an idea of why I want a board to like just instantly just flip upside down on you. It becomes top to bottom. I want the AI to just be insane, but not ins- the crazy AI. That the guy just stabbing you constantly and you stuck and you can't get away from him. <laughs> we want we want to have fun with it, but we want to show you that the system is alive. You got Oton in the console that you're playing, but Oton itself within itself is a is a game within itself. I mean, while you're trying to play regular games, you actually building up toward a final end battle with the system itself. That's, that's a final end battle. You finna battle your console <laughs> at the end of the day if you can overcome all these levels. I, I don't Crazy. Know. I don't know how to, to respond to that. I've never fought a console before. The million level uh, challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I could I guess I could say I fought my NES, but that was just you know me beating the crap out of it when trying to play Fester's Quest. <laughs> but uh, or Friday the Thirteenth. Oh jeez. Oh God, I hate that game. <laughs> Man, uh, a lot of people listening to this probably don't even know what an NES is. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but like I said, we're gonna take a short break. I hate to end this talk on Otan, but we do want to talk, uh, quote unquote, about the big three. Absolutely, let's do um, it. Yep. And we'll come back from the break and we'll get on with those guys. So great. Come back in Cyber Chat. That's it. It's your community. It's your community radio station. Caps Internet Radio. If you didn't listen to the B particular show with Becky, here's what you missed. No, don't mind that wild sex in there every once in a while, but <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Y'all don't have a fit now. <laughs> you know what I mean. But I now, now, let I me know. take it, though. I can read about it, but the audio books that, and where they're reading you the same book mm-hmm. that you could be reading in paper, I don't like for them to tell me over the, over the riding down the road. You know, I just don't <laughs> like that. Be particular with Becky each Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. here on CAPS Internet Radio. Carter's Hardware, located on Highway 21 in Munford, can help with those supply needs without having to drive out of town from plumbing to carpenter to automotive needs. Carter's Hardware has many of the basic items you need to get the job done. Owner Gary Carter can order just about any type of machinery at reasonable prices. Just stop by and ask. And of course, he is your local U-Haul pickup and drop-off location as well. Stop by Carter's Hardware today. You might even overhear some town talk or a little politics as well. Carter's Hardware on Highway 21 in Munford. Enjoying the programming here at the New Caps Internet Radio? Well, others are listening too, and they could be listening to your commercial just as you're hearing ours now. With reasonable rates to get your message out, Caps Internet Radio can customize a message about your business, service, or event to those who enjoy community and talk radio. Give us a call today on our business line at 256-453-5491 and arrange today your commercial spot infomercial or other information you need out to the public caps internet radio people are listening aren't you if you didn't catch traveling beyond here's what you missed i just received a note how can you take a guy named putin seriously (laughs) i don't really know much about putin (laughs) yes i said that on purpose folks I got everybody in studio laughing at me now. Traveling Beyond with Cody and Chris every Thursday night at 7 o'clock right here on CAPS Internet Radio. If you'd like to be a part of today's program, call 256-854-9411 or email us at capsinternetradio.com.
Munford Palm, located at the intersection of Highway 21 and Bird Street in Munford, has a large selection of items that might interest you and you might pick up at a bargain. Munford Palm also buys and sells gold and silver besides handling your palm needs. Munford Palm, just off Highway 21 in Munford. All right, we are back with Cyber Chat. Uh, Chris and special guest Derek Samuels in the studio here. I'm co piloting this ship, guys. Oh, yeah. Chris, Chris got me right. <laughs> um, we're going to move on from, um, from down home, uh, <laughs> Alabama uh, creation. You know, you can make a console in Alabama, it is possible. Yeah, a lot of people think it's impossible because we come from Alabama that we don't have the same ambitions or desires to create, you know, next generation stuff in Silicon, like Silicon Valley. Uh, we want the South to be the new Silicon Valley, if we can if we can say that. We we like to innovate over here too. We play the stuff, so I think we can do it. Oh yeah, uh, we don't have much time left, uh, but we do want to go ahead and yes. try to touch on some of the big three. This is going to be really quick. Uh, unfortunately, going to start off with the Wii U. Uh, it's the only system out so far. The big three. It came out uh, November eighteenth last year. Right. Seems like Nintendo always wants to get a jump on them. Right. Uh, has two different versions: a 299 version and a 349 version. Uh, the only real difference between them is the 299 version has, I think, an eight gigabyte hard drive, mm -hmm. and the 349 has, I think, it's a, an 80 or 120. Right. Um, I think it's one of them. <laughs> uh, I thought I wrote it down, but I guess I it's one of them. Uh, yeah, it's one of them. <laughs> oh, um, all right. Some of the specs going over them real quick. We got a IBM Power PC Expresso. Mm -hmm. uh, AMD Radeon. It seems like the the new boys, uh, the new big consoles are li like the way the smaller ones, like uh, Nvidia, the bigger ones are going with uh, a uh, Radeons. Uh, so they have a Radeon Latte. Uh, we have two gigabytes of DDR3 and eight gigabytes of flash memory, and it's 32 on the 349 system. I did okay. write it down. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest features is uh, the controller. It's got a 6.2 inch, 16 by 9 resistive touchscreen. Controller. I got that system. You do? I got that system. I'm an old Nintendo head, so oh, yeah. I like it somewhat. Uh, you know, my Wii just kind of got through by the wayside real quick, and I'm kind of that's why I'm kind of worried about it. <laughs> you know, I, I, it looks really interesting, but so did the Wii. Right. You know, and I'm afraid it's just going to lose its luster after a right. while. Uh, it is the only system out of the big three to be backwards compatible. Uh, it'll even work with the accessories from the Wii. The nunchuck, nice. the balance board, that's always awesome. Right. Uh, some of the future games coming out for it, Super Mario Brothers, uh, I'm sorry, Super Smash Brothers U, Mario Kart 8, some of the bigger games, Watch Dog, uh, Odd World, another Odd World game, <laughs> hadn't seen one of those yeah. in a while, uh, right. Stranger's Wrath, Odd World Stranger's Wrath, Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, Bayonetta 2. Wow. Uh, I played Bayonetta, that one was insane. That, that took me back to, it was like an NES game, it was oh, so crazy. Yeah. Uh, and Splinter Cell Blacklist is actually going to be on it too. Uh, some bit, some of the big news and some of the bad news for it. Uh, Beth Bethesda has announced they will have they have no games in wow. development for the Wii U. So that means no Skyrim for Wii. Wow. Uh, but Activision has said they will do everything they can to support the system. Uh, and this is the only one we can really say this about. Uh, as of June of this year, uh, Nintendo reports that they have sold 3.61 million Wii U's. Man, that's a good number to have. Oh yeah. <laughs> for yeah. them, they don't like that number. But for us, we would love. Oh, it. I know. They, they, they're probably thinking, why haven't we sold more? <laughs> more, so more. Uh, some of the reviews on it, they've been praising the controller, uh, but they criticize its battery life. It only lasts for three hours. Right. Uh, if you're a hardcore gamer, that's nothing. Uh, and limited console, st what they call console standard features. Right. You know, it just doesn't do some of the things you would expect it to do. And of course, a lack of games. You know, but that's that's with any you know right. new system when it comes out. But then again, it has been out nearly a year. Right. So where are those games? Um, again, moving on pretty quickly, we're coming to the Xbox. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, as soon as they announce this system, I just I have never. Even though they've been pulling some of the really bad things like Always On. Right. It just seems like there's still so much bad stuff left. Uh, <laughs> so much bad stuff left. I mean, I love my 360. I love it. And then I'm reading about the one. The first thing that hit me in the face was the title. Can they not count at Microsoft? I don't <laughs> know, know the logic behind it. I wish they would have came with a better name. Oh, yeah. Um, so far, we're looking at November this year for release right. date, $499. Yeah. 
that's that's deep in your pocket. Yeah, if I'm spending that much money, I'm building a new computer. <laughs> uh, we have an AMD eight core uh, accelerated processing unit powering it. Uh, now the accelerated processing unit acts as both the CPU and the GPU. The GPU is a Radeon variant. Uh, we've got eight gigabytes of DDR three. Three is is reserved for the software itself, while you have five for the games okay. that are dedicated to the games. You got a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which is not upgradable. You're stuck with that. I know 500 gigs sounds like a lot, right? But in this day and age where we're downloading everything, right. Right. it's not. It's going to fill up quick. Um, now I did a little bit of research on this. Uh, estimated theoretical peak power is 1.31 teraflops. Oh yeah. Now that sounds like a lot. Of course, that's a floating point per second. Right. It's basically the computing ability right. of a computer. Right. Uh, one of the big things, one of the, so far looks like the only reason to be able to get to get an Xbox One is it's going to have 4K resolution, which means nice. it's going to be able to spit those games out at 2160p. Oh yeah. As soon as the TVs come out for it. <laughs> uh, it's going to have a Blu-ray drive I don't know how they talk Sony into letting them have the Blu-ray drive Yeah, Sony should have played uh, uh, Bully yeah. on that one. Oh yeah uh, <laughs> Some of the games that have been announced for it so far Forza 5, Halo, Dead Rising 3 Dragon Age Inquisition, Elder Scrolls Online Kingdom Hearts 3, Mad Max, Witcher 3 uh, A lot of sequels <laughs> Now don't get me wrong I'm, in, I'm very looking forward to Witcher 3 And Mad Max looks amazing uh, but I'm hoping Mad Max has a PC version. <laughs> <laughs> but real quick, but see, that's the difference with, with consoles. They constantly keep repeating the same thing because there's nowhere else to go they, uh, as far as something new. But go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I yeah. know we got to go. Uh, some, of the, some of the criticism, launch lineup is uninspired and superficial visuals over innovation. Uh, over innovation? The, really? Yeah, no, um, what visuals oh, over innovation. Gotcha, gotcha. They want to look pretty more than they invent gotcha. new things. Right, right. Uh, as opposed to the right, generation right. of gaming that Microsoft promised right. us. Uh, a quote, I think this is from IGN, uh, providing pretty games that didn't offer a noticeable change from the 360, giving little reason for spending $499 on the new system. Ooh. Uh, they priced it too high, and the $100 premium over competitor could derail the system this holiday. That's an actual quote from IGN. <laughs> now, I'm kind of uh, out of the IGN loop. Uh, I think they're paid off. Uh, <laughs> no comments here from uh, yeah, me. I yeah. just <laughs> but, uh, but no, no, that, that is entirely a my opinion. That has nothing to do with caps or ingenious or anybody. Yeah. Just want to put that out there. Uh, real quickly, moving on to the PlayStation 4, yep. and I'll admit, if I bought one of the big three, this is where I'd be. Um, if I had to. But I want to Oton first. I got you. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> but if I got to get one of the big Let's three, do uh, the only thing we have right now is quarter four this year. Looking at three ninety nine. That's that's still kind of a that's a bite to your wallet, but it's nothing like the five hundred. They made an announcement today, uh, November fifteenth. Really, November fifteenth. Yes. Okay, so that's uh, um, for the PlayStation. Yeah. So that I don't think uh, has Microsoft announced a specific no, date yet. Not yet. So, I think we'll see one now pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> Very soon. Um, specs, we got a semi-custom 8-core AMD APU uh, with an AMD Radeon uh, GPU on it. We've got 8 gigabytes of GDDR5. Wow. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, if I can, I think i got enough time to do this. Graphics double-rate data. It's pretty much based on DDR3, but with an 8-bit uh, wide prefetch, prefetch buffers. I wish I had more time to explain that. I don't. A 500 gigabyte hard drive, but it is upgradable. Okay. So I can drop a, a terabyte in there if I have to. Uh, theoretical peak performance of the PS4 is 1.84 teraflops, a little bit more, uh, but it's only going to support that 4K resolution with photos and movies. It's not okay. going to be able to render the games in it. A little bit of a downside, but I think the upsides of that system based on some of its competition right. um, is just is great. Uh, Blu-ray, as usual. Uh, some of the games that are coming out for it, a lot of the ones, uh, pretty much all the ones besides Halo that I named, uh, so far we've got Daylight, which is a survival horror game, Deep Down, which is a role-playing game, Infamous Second Son, The Order 1866, which looks very interesting. It basically takes place right. in a Tesla world. Right. Uh, so, I mean, yes, there's a few sequels, but so far, besides one, it's all brand new stuff on the PlayStation 4. Right. Now, obviously, we're going to get some God of War. Yes. There's, there's no Gotta way have some that, God of War. Gotta get some God of War. <laughs> Uh, John Carmack, uh, the lord and master of video gaming, uh, <laughs> said that it's a phenomenal piece of hardware. Oh, that's a big piece of endorsement right there. Yeah. Uh, Sony, this is also from him, Sony made wise engineering choices. Uh, the upgradable hard drive uh, has drawn praise. 
Uh, I think this is again from IGN, a quote from IGN. If you are um, if you are about games like Sony does, uh, you'll buy the PlayStation Four. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, if I had to get one, that'd be it. Uh, real quick, uh, we're usually going to try to end the show. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do uh, a lot of them. I'm just going to hit the top three. We're usually going to end the show here. I hate doing this so quick. If we run out of time, this was an awesome show. Absolutely, uh, we're going to have to get Derek back. Absolutely, I got to come back, guys. Oh, I yeah. got I got some stuff I want to share with oh, you. Oh yeah, but uh, real quick. Uh, box office numbers. This is how we're usually going to end the show. Uh, we got number one, Lee Daniels, the butler. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, that is uh, Forrest Whitaker's right. uh, new movie. Uh, it brought in uh, up to Monday. Uh, well, actually, it doesn't have a – oh, yeah. It, so far, it's brought in over the weekend $27 million. Yes. Um, that, that movie does look interesting to me. Right. Um, I haven't been able to hit the theaters a lot, but we're running out of time. Number two, we're the Millers. Uh, coming up, bringing in number that. two, uh, has a value of 71 million right now. Value <laughs> <laughs> made 71 million right now. Number three, Elysium. It looks good, but it I was just good. don't know. It was good. It, it just, it looks I like, loved it. it looks like so many other movies to me. I almost cried at the end. Uh, I loved it, <laughs> but we're up to 57 million on Elysium guys. I don't want to end it. We got to end it. <laughs> um, so, uh, traveling beyond, uh, this Thursday at 7 PM new time. Uh, new show, going to be talking, new, <laughs> new time, new day, going to be talking about Area 51. Nice. Um, next week uh, on Cyber Chat, we're going to be talking about comic book movie adaptations. Oh, nice. <laughs> There's a lot. We obviously can't hit them all. Uh, I want to say thanks to Derek again for coming in with us. Uh, go to Indiegogo. Uh, support him. Go to go to Facebook.com yes. slash Ingenix. Uh, is it Ingenix.com? Ingenix.com, yes. Ingenix.com, the website. Um Check out our Facebook, facebook.com slash cyberchat. Of course, uh, facebook.com, uh, sorry, it's facebook.com slash caps cyberchat, facebook.com slash caps internet radio. And I want to say something real quick. Hey, we love this industry. We just w hope this industry loves us as much as we love it. Thanks for having us on the show. Guys, we will see you on Thursday. <laughs>